Well, good evening once again, day 1456 of the Trump administration. That leaves just six days until the inauguration of Joe Biden as our 46th president. Tonight, there are more U.S. troops in Washington than we currently have deployed in Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan combined. The U.S. Capitol and increasingly the nearby mall are armed encampments in effect. Sadly, they need to be. Eight days after insurrectionists looted and desecrated the center of our government and in light of the numerous and serious threats coming into the, the inauguration. Tonight, Politico has some disturbing reporting. An inauguration rehearsal scheduled for Sunday has been postponed today because of security concerns. Even the president-elect has canceled his plans to take Amtrak to Washington from Wilmington. That was planned for Monday. More seriously, Politico also notes this as one of the many reasons for the intense security. Quote, a vast, a vast swath of the president's diehard base in MAGA nation, the conspiracy theorists, the militia members, the followers of the QAnon conspiracy theory, has disregarded Trump's Wednesday remarks. They are dissecting his phrases, using those cues as rallying cries, doubling down on their plans to keep the MAGA movement going after Trump leaves the White House. The absence of a formal Trump concession to President-elect Joe Biden has emboldened their chatter and bolstered their ideology. Today, we finally heard from the director of the FBI who outlined the threats. We are seeing an extensive amount uh, of concerning online chatter, I guess the best way I would describe it, about a number of events surrounding the inauguration. We're tracking calls for potential armed protests and activity leading up to the inauguration. And the reason I use the word potential is because one of the real challenges in this space uh, is trying to distinguish what's aspirational versus what's intentional. Uh, we're concerned about the potential for violence at multiple protests and rallies planned here in D.C. and at state capitol buildings around the country in the days to come that could bring armed individuals within close proximity to government buildings and officials. We're looking at individuals who may have an eye towards repeating that same kind of violence that we saw last week. Please note, meeting shared by the vice president, the president nowhere to be seen. The FBI director also said over 200 suspects in the January 6 attack have been identified. Over 100 people are under arrest. They include the man seen carrying the Confederate flag inside the Capitol building and a retired firefighter seen on video striking police officers with a fire extinguisher. Tonight, the Washington Post reports dozens of people on a terrorist watch list, most of them suspected white supremacists, are, were in Washington the day of the rampage. As for the FBI director's warning about potential violence around the country, NBC News adds this, quote, more than a dozen flyers are circulating online advertising pro-Trump rallies at state capitals. According to a social and media analysis by the network, freedom is a right, one popular flyer reads, refuse to be silenced, says another. An FBI bulletin notes these protests are expected to take place at state capitals starting as early as this weekend. Earlier today, the governor of Kentucky said his administration is bracing for the days ahead. We're going to have a much larger presence, uh, certainly, uh, around our state capitol buildings. We can't play patty cake with so-called militias anymore and pretend that they just dressed up for Halloween. These are dangerous folks that uh, want to, in many cases, uh, topple our government and are willing to use violence to do it. Now, we cannot allow this to become the new normal. Meantime, the U.S. Senate is preparing for the trial of the only president in our history to be impeached twice. It could begin right after the inauguration, just as Joe Biden is trying to launch his new administration. The outgoing president has caused major ruptures within his own party. Yesterday, as you know, those 10 House members, Republicans all, joined with the Democrats, crossed over to support impeachment. Democrats in the Senate would need 17 Republicans to cross over to get a conviction. Today, Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska said the House was right to impeach. This 
president violated his oath of office, and I believe there must be consequences to that. I believe that the, the, the House, in advancing the articles of impeachment, is entirely appropriate. When the impeachment comes to the Senate, as I assume it will, I will do what I am required and entrusted to do as a senator, as, as effectively listening to that, that trial and that proceeding. Um, and I will make my determination at that time. Trump's trade advisor, Peter Navarro, one of the few White House figures still openly, publicly supporting his boss. Here's what he had to say this morning about the House vote. As you watch this, we ask that you remember this man has a Ph.D. from Harvard. The Democratic Party did violence to this country by attacking a president who I believe was legally elected on November 3rd. I've never been more pissed off in my life at this place. And I think there's 74 million Americans out there who voted for President Trump who feel exactly the same way. What Congress is doing right now yeah. is they're turning a divide between a 50-50 country into a chasm. OK, and the people of this country, the Trump people are not going to stand for this. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.